Hello, I'm Phil Hinton, the site editor, and welcome along to another video here on AV Forums. Today we are looking at the LG C3 and we're looking at the best picture settings out of the box that get you close enough to the industry standards to see content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Uh, these are not calibrated settings. Uh, for calibration, you would need a meter, uh, which is rather expensive. You'd also need software and a pattern generator. We're not going to go to that extent. Basically, you want to get the best out of your TV without calibration. These are the best out of the box settings to get you to the same point that a calibration would get you to uh, with the odd error here and there because it's not going to be perfect out of the box but these are the best settings to get you close enough so first of all we're going to look at standard dynamic range or sdr we're then going to look at hdr and then we're going to look at dolby vision now to set the menus correctly you have to feed the tv an sdr signal so a normal hd or SD signal, a TV tuner, or a DVD, or a Blu-ray. Uh, feed something that is uh, that into the TV, which should be easy enough. It's everything that you're gonna look at that isn't HDR, basically. And then what you need to do is long press the settings button on the remote for about three seconds, and that will bring up the advanced menu straight away. Now, there are other ways of getting into the menus. Uh, they're rather long-winded. If you want to get straight into these menus, then hold the settings button on the remote down for three seconds and it'll bring you straight here. So uh, SDR content, the best mode is filmmaker mode. We have measured this mode. I'll put the graphs up on screen now so you can see that the grayscale and the Rec 709 HD color gamut is very accurate out of the box. Delta E errors are under the visible threshold, which means you're not going to see any errors whatsoever. Um, so that is it, basically. We're going to quickly run through and just change and make sure that uh, other settings are set correctly. Uh, but basically, filmmaker mode is what we're going to use. Now, if you have set up the TV for the first time, uh, it will be in the eco mode, so auto power save mode. The other thing that you need to uh, be aware of, and one of the first things that we should change straight away, is to go into the general menu, and we're going to all the way down to the bottom to energy saving. And I've already been in here and I have switched energy saving off. Uh, you need to switch it off to get the very best out of the TV. No point buying a high dynamic range TV like this and then strangling the performance by having the energy saving switched on. And so you make sure that that is switched off. So filmmaker mode in the main picture menu. And then I'm going to go to aspect ratio and you can either set this uh, to 16 by 9 or original. We're going to use original. And then just scan, we want to make sure that just scan is switched on. And then finally, we're just going to quickly check the advanced settings menu. And we're going to go into brightness and just make sure that everything needs to be switched off, like the auto dynamic contrast and peak brightness. And these are settings that do affect uh, the video signal. We want a pure video signal coming into the TV so we can see it as it was intended to be seen. So we're going to switch those off. Color, there's nothing to do in this menu. Just make sure uh, color gamut is set to auto. Uh, we don't go into white balance or fine tune because uh, we don't have a meter or software and you cannot set those by eye. Um, your eye is not sensitive enough to set those settings. You need a meter and software to do that. Clarity. Uh, adjust sharpness, you can take that all the way down to 0 um, or you can leave it at 10. Basically anything between 0 and 10 is not applying any sharpening uh, to the image, so that is your choice uh, there. And then we're going to make sure everything else apart from real cinema is switched off um, because we don't, again, want anything that's going to scrub any detail like noise reduction, MPEG noise reduction. Uh, smooth gradation etc. We don't want any of that switched on. We want a, a true video signal and true motion We want that switched off to get the best motion now uh, because of the way OLED works with this instant pixel response um, You do get the sample and hold effect which can to some viewers look like uh, uh, a judder um, that's more severe than normal 24 frames judder. So uh, in those circumstances if you are very sensitive to that go to cinematic movement it adds a little bit of interpolation without adding too much soap opera effect um, so you can get around that issue with that so that is everything that we need uh, for standard uh, dynamic range viewing next we're going to go to hdr now to get the hdr menu up what we need to do is feed the tv an hdr signal now you can do that from a 4k blu-ray 
uh, that is not Dolby Vision or you can do it through a streaming service where you get HDR content, again, that is not Dolby Vision. We basically want what's known as HDR 10 content. Uh, HDR, high dynamic range, 10 is 10 bit. It's the standard base layer for HDR, all HDR content, HDR 10 plus, HDR 10, Dolby Vision. It's all based on that one layer. Um, we're gonna do Dolby Vision in a little while, but first of all, feed the TV an HDR signal and we'll come back with the HDR menus. So we're now feeding the TV uh, an HDR signal. And again, I'm gonna hold and press the settings button and it'll bring up the, the main menu for us. And again, in the HDR select mode, we're going to go with filmmaker mode. It is the most accurate out of the box. Uh, to get your HDR image looking the way it should look and the way it was intended and mastered to look. Again, aspect ratio, we're gonna leave that as original and with just scan on. Uh, and then into the advanced settings. Uh, and again, there's absolutely nothing for us to do in here other than just check that nothing is switched on that shouldn't be. The only difference is here is peak brightness will be set to high. Uh, and then if we come down to Color, uh, there's nothing for us to do there. Just check it is on auto for color gamut. And then we're gonna come down to clarity. Uh, and in here, again, we just wanna make sure that everything is switched off. True motion, again, um, for some reason in filmmaker mode HDR, it switched to cinematic movement. You can use that uh, for a tiny little bit of interpolation, or you can switch it off for a pure video signal. And basically that is about it. Uh, in terms of settings. Um, the only other thing that we want to do in here is just make sure that dynamic tone mapping is switched off. Uh, it will on default be switched to on. Now you can use it and it will brighten up the image, but what it does is it over brightens the HDR image. It over brightens the PQ curve, uh, makes things a little bit too bright and obviously takes it away from creator's intent and how it should be seen. Um, so if you want, uh, again, a pure HDR signal, make sure that that is switched off. Now that is everything we need to do for HDR, or as we call it, HDR 10. We're gonna go to Dolby Vision next. So we're now feeding the TV a Dolby Vision signal, and this is important if you want to follow the steps here. You need to now be um, supplying the TV with a Dolby Vision signal. Now, you may be looking at this video and thinking, uh, Phil, you haven't changed the background image at all. Uh, so how are you now feeding it a Dolby Vision signal and how are you feeding HDR10 and uh, standard dynamic range? Uh, basically, I'm using the Spears and Munsell, um, the benchmark disc. Uh, it has demo material, which you can go in and you can actually change uh, the signal type on the demo uh, feed, which is what I'm doing. So I've just changed it to Dolby Vision. Uh, you can also change it to HDR10+, uh, if your TV and player is capable of that, as well as HDR10 or normal HDR uh, signals. So you can change that, and you can also do HLG through uh, this disc as well. Um, but for you, all you need to do is go to Netflix or Prime Video, find some Dolby Vision content, start playing that content, make sure that the Dolby Vision logo comes up on your TV, and then again, holding the settings button on the C3 here, and we're just waiting on the main menu to come up and it comes up here with Dolby Vision and it gives us a few modes to select from game, cinema, cinema home. Now cinema home is Dolby Vision IQ, which means it uses the light sensor to change uh, the brightness in real time, uh, depending on your room conditions. If you want that, select cinema home. Now we're gonna use cinema because it is the most accurate out of the box uh, when we're in Dolby Vision. Um, so that is what we're gonna select there. And again, like everything else, we're just using the best out of the box settings. So just double checking the aspect ratio is set correctly there as well. And it is uh, advanced settings. There's not anything for us to change in here other than just quickly checking that the TV hasn't done anything it shouldn't do. Uh, you will notice under brightness that the dynamic HDR tone mapping disappears uh, because it's not available when you're feeding the TV Dolby Vision because Dolby Vision has dynamic metadata within it. Uh, and again, color, we're not gonna change anything in there. And clarity, we're just gonna make sure true motion uh, is switched off in there and everything else that could affect the image is switched off. And that is all you need to do for the best out of the box settings. 
I hope this video has been useful. If you've got any questions, then please do put them in the comments section below this video. Or if you're watching on uh, AV forums, you can do that in the forum that this video is featured in. And again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe and like the video.